got another one and another E4 game and another Sicilian. Okay, I knew sooner or later the Alapin would rear its ugly head and I expect to see it often in these games. Oh, at least he's not playing the the true blue Alpin with the queen on e2. And he's kind of mixing and matching a few lines here. But I'm okay with that because your queen is worse on that square than it typically is in the Alpin. Interesting move. If queen e4, I would probably play f5. Okay, let's go b6, because if I can go bishop a6 and get rid of that, that seems like a good idea. And we'll do that. And did I blunder right then? Actually, let's think. Queen c7. If he takes the rook, I take there. Let's speculate a bit. Uh huh. And now, if you take the rook, I have knight c6, and the queen's a bit trapped. And since he allowed that, where is this king going to be safe? That's going to pose significant problems in the long run. I'm looking at knight a5, rook a c8, and simply inviting everybody to the party. I can appreciate what you're telling me with that move, that you would like to get your pieces over there. But if you want it, it needs to be on my terms. The captain obvious move. And let's just go here. Ask if he will go away. doesn't want to go away but I think we forgot about this and as I take we're gonna get some ideas here pretty quick I think I can get away with this King's still looking pretty safe. And my first gut reaction, because my king is not safe, is to play this move to trade queens. And then since he stepped away from the defense of this, let's go for that. That is definitely not going to help. As I'm jockeying my king over to protect the base pawn, the other rook's going to take care of defending that for me. Let's get off that. Now just play a little bit faster. Much better defensive move. And I'm just going to improve a bit. You can have a lot of these pawns if you really want them. Now we force the trader rooks, and that really ends the discussion. 
and we want to try to go with the most efficient mate when you're low on time. So you do a mate that has a very, very low chance of stalemating your opponent. Okay, so we have ourselves our first Alapin guest, and this is probably the, the best move order if you're an E6 um, Sicilian player to play against the Alapin because it's going to work in multiple move orders, which I'm going to go ahead and note for you. Like, for instance, if E4, C5, C3, Knight of 6, E5, Knight D5, D4, C takes D4. Knight f3, you don't want to take because you hang the knight, e6, then they go cd4. So we got that position. And then if we go e4, c5, knight f3, e6, c3, knight f6, e5, knight d5, d4, cd4, cd4, that is an exact transposition of what we just looked at. And lastly, if e4, c5, d4, c takes d4, c3, you don't have to accept the gambit unless you're into that sort of thing. You can play knight f6, where the best recommended move is e5, knight d5, knight f3, and lo and behold, we have the exact same position three times by different move orders, so you only need to learn one line, which is why I think a lot of players do this. So back to the main game. My opponent plays a move that I wasn't too familiar with, and this reminded me of a line in my Master of the French Defense text where white goes queen e2 on move two. And you don't want to play d5 because you can't capture back with a pawn. You want to go bishop e7 first and then d5. That's what I recommend in the book. There's a number of lines there. But uh, when we get to queen e2, that's why I play bishop e7. Same sort of idea. And after e5, we get kind of an interesting dynamic because I... I felt like, okay, queen e4, bishop d3 could be kind of troublesome after I castle. So I, I do consider queen e4, and I was considering f5. Okay, my, my first reaction was not miserable. Gets a tempo off the queen, and then a6 or knight c6. I would probably go for none of the above and go b6. Same kind of idea. I don't like white having this bishop alive in the structure, which is one of the reasons I don't play early knight c6s so much, is so I have this idea like we saw in the main game. After b6, this this is a typical mistake I see, and I've even had players as strong as 2000 make it, where once you compromise the structure, you're going to have some problems. Normally this knight wants to go to d2 and then e4, where you don't ever allow this capture. But, oh, of course, wrong arrow key. But once you are able to get this capture, you're in good shape. And I played bishop a6, and then I immediately thought, oh, I messed up. But then, you know, that's, that's one of the great things about uh, actually thinking. <laughs> you can get yourself out of trouble sometimes. So I went with queen c7. My first reaction was to take... And what I realized was this was pretty good. But then on second thought, I went queen c7 with the idea of doing it this way. And my reaction was that if they took, I didn't see bishop d3. I was thinking about knight c6 here, or bishop takes g2. If knight c6, we get this kind of interesting imbalanced position where I thought black would be better even though white can get safe pretty quick the extra minor pieces make a big difference in queen versus two rook endings if it was just pure queen versus two rook I would not be confident entering into the ending but with the extra minor pieces it typically heavily favors the queen so after rook takes Rook a c8 was good, uh-huh, and the immediate queen takes c3. And I'll, I'll let that move sit there, because safety first, honestly. Um, I didn't see any risk in doing what I did. Queen takes d4, mate in 11. And this is a, a typical problem that I have, just because it's that I want to be safe. 
Um, let's see the mate. Queen b2, king d1. That's pretty straightforward. And it also comes from, again, me not studying tactics enough and being fresh to continue to go into complications and not worry about things. When I see I can get the ending where I'm better and have basically no chances to lose, I go for it because I don't really have to think in this ending. It's I need to get pawns up the board without losing them. And I'm just probing weaknesses, bring the rook back. And now pushing the d-pawn would be good at some point too to trade, but he did it for me. Another one bites the dust. And this is what I was waiting on, even with a low amount of time. I'm always looking to get that last bit of counterplay off the board. Then it doesn't take much time to get the staircase with only a few seconds wasted. That'll do it for this one.